مس الیسون ایمس جپنیو سينماس أسو أسو بتير مات كرياس عليه سينماس أي ربي يقوم معنا ليس سلام وعين في دين نقر تأخذنا سوايا كان مساقين قبل شوك يا أبان ليس في السموات اسمك لهات ملكوتك تكون مشيتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض خبدنا كففنا أعطينا اليوم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا كما نغفر نحن أيضا للمسلمين علينا ولا تدخلنا في تجربة لكن نجينا من الشرير في المسيح يسوع ربنا لنا لك الملك وقوى المجد للأبد خم بخريستوس إيسوس بن شويس كيلي <تصفيق> Let us give thanks on the mission, mercy of the Father, O Lord, God and Savior. Jesus, have you has covered us, supported us, preserved us, expanded us, spared us, supported us, and has brought us unto this hour. Let us ask Him, the Lord, our God, the Pentecostal, that He may keep us all this holy day and all the days of our life. Oh, 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 Jesus oh, we thank you for everything. Concerning everything and everything, for you have covered us, supported us, preserved us, accept and you spared us, support us, and have brought us unto this hour. Pray that God may have mercy and compassion on, on us, hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good on our behalf at all times, and to repose the soul of your servant, Atadel Tedros, and forgive us. 
us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, who has contrived, through God the soul of my kind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the real life and all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work set in the comes of good men, the rising of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us, from all your people, from the soul of your servant, and from this whole place which is yours, but think it's so good for the authorities, the three serpents and scorpions, and every power of the enemy. <laughs> Oti hane chipi e e ma othi othi ma sho en chenek me chid hit hit en ni presvejan te ti se oto konsenso ab maria choi sari e mot nane beko e volenten en novi e sereno zero. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I am conscious of my iniquity and my sin is at all times before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil before you, that you might be just in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins my mother conceived me. For behold, you have loved the truth. You have manifested to me the hidden and unrevealed things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with your hyssop, and I shall be purified. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me to hear gladness and joy. The humble bones shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in my inward parts. Do not cast me away from your face and do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a directing spirit. Then I shall teach the transgressors your ways and the ungodly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. Do good, O Lord, in your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with sacrifices of righteousness, offering and burnt sacrifices. Then they shall offer calves upon your altar. Alleluia. among your people. Pray for our fathers and brethren who are sick with any sickness, whether in this place or in any place, that Christ our God may grant us with them health and healing and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Tested them with mercy and the compassion, heal them. Take away from them and from us all sickness and all malady. The spirit of sickness, away. 
Those who long lean in sickness, raise them and they comfort all afflicted by unclean spirits, set them all free. All those in prisons or dungeons or exile captivity are those who held the better bondage. O Lord, set them all free and have mercy upon them. For you are he who loses the hope of little the fallen, the hope of those who have no helper, the help of those who have no helper, the comfort of the faint heart, and the harbor of those in the storm. All souls are tertiary, so bound with them mercy, O Lord, give them rest, give them call them grace, give them help, give them salvation, give them the forgiveness of their sins and their iniquities. As for us also, O Lord, the malice of our souls, you are the body to the cure. O you the true physician of our souls and our bodies, the bishop of all flesh, visit us with your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the regions of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness unto the upright in heart. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning now and forever and ever, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Sons of our father David the prophet and the king, may his blessing be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your disease? Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Alleluia. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he hath given to the sons of men. The, the dead don't pray the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Alleluia. My soul language for your salvation, I hope in your word. I hold my life in my hand continual, but I don't forget your law. Let me live that I may praise you, and let your ordinance help me. Alleluia. Ten oish temokopiechrestor. 
Kristus nempekioten agatos nempi abnav ma etawab je av ashkak sorti emonaina. The Pauline of Paul, the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, and appointed to the Gospel of God, a chapter from his first epistle to the Corinthians, may his blessings be among us all. Amen. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. And it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. And it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the corruption inherit incorruption. The grace of God the Father be with us all. Amen. Oh, oh, oh.
psalm of David the prophet and the king. <clears throat> May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. O oh Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and Ra. Righteous. We beseech our Lord and our God that we may be worthy to hear the holy and divine gospel. In wisdom, let us attend to the holy gospel. A reading according to our teacher, St. Matthew. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head, and he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much, and given to ooh, ooh, the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial of her. Bow down before the Holy Ghost. <laughs> In the 
name of the Trinity, one essence in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, this very soul for whom we are gathered, O Lord, repose here in the kingdom of heaven. Open unto her, O Lord, the gates of heaven, and receive her unto you according to great mercy. Open unto her, O Lord, the gate of righteousness, that she may enter therein and rejoice there. Open unto her, O Lord, the gate of paradise, as you opened unto the thief. Open unto her, O Lord, the gate of the kingdom. May she be a partaker with all the saints. Open unto her, O Lord, the gates of rest, that she may sing with all the angels. May she be worthy to see joy, let the angels of light lead her in the, in the life. May she report in the bosom of our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Israel. Forgive her her sins, which she has offered time, committed both knowingly and unknowingly. For you, O Lord, know the feebleness, of, the feebleness and the weakness of humanity, and in your mercy give consolation to all whom she has left behind, and to her household, and give unto them patience and a god heavenly reward through the intercession of Our Lady, the Lady of us all, Saint Mary, and all the whole choir of heaven. It both your mercy and your help be with your people, grant them coolness, establish us in your orthodox faith, be a protector unto us, we the faithful. We will share you with our Christ, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you ever, for you. For you were crucified and saved us. Es beweit en ti ona ke noche volen go em mosik es maraot o pachoi si sos je avashka soti em mon. Truly, we believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, who created heaven and earth and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and of the Virgin Mary, and became man, and he was crucified for us and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead according to the scriptures ascended to the heavens, sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of giver, who proceeds from the Father, who of the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets, and in one holy God and of our church, we confess one baptism for our we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Prosef kisto thite Irini pasi Et omneu mati Asgard of Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
We ask an entry, their goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the souls of your servants who have fallen asleep, our fathers and our brethren. Pray for our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep and reposed in the faith of Christ since the beginning. Our Holy Father, the Archbishops, our Father, the Bishops, our Father, the Hegumens, our Father, the Priests, our Brethren, the Deacons, our Father, the Monks, and our Father, the Laymen, and for the full repose of Christians, that Christ our God may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy, and we too, and repose the soul of Dr. Atidad, and we too accord mercy unto us, and forgive us our our sins. Lord, have mercy. Graciously, O Lord, repose all their souls in the booths of our holy fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustain them in green pasture and the water of the rest in the paradise of joy. The place out which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your sins. Raise up their bodies also on the day which have appointed according to your true promises, which are without lie. Grant them the good things of your promises, which an eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have come in the heart of man. The things which you, God, have prepared for those who love your holy name, for this is not death for your servant, but a departure, even if in neglect or headless or has overtaken them, as men sent they were clothed in flesh and dwelt in this world. O God, as the good one and the lover of mankind, graciously accord the Lord to repose and forgive them, your servant, the Orthodox Christian, who are in the whole world from the east to the west and from the north to the south, which uh, each one according to his name and each one according to her name. O Lord, repose and forgive them. <coughs> For no one is pure and without blemish, even though his life on earth be a single day. As for those, O Lord, whose soul you have taken report them, and may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As for us, all grant us our cash and perfection that would be blessing to you, and they give them and us a share and inherit us with all your sins. Lord, have mercy. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I want to first thank everybody for coming today. Um, I'm very moved by all the people that came. Um, I know some of you are here because 
you new mom, and uh, maybe I didn't know you that well. And uh, some of you are here because you knew me, and I know some of you didn't hardly even know my mother, maybe, maybe not even met her, uh, and I appreciate that. Um, I want to just share a couple of thoughts about mom. Um, I'm sure there's, there's a lot. Those of you who did know her know there's a lot to be said about mom. Um, I want to start by uh, sharing an experience I had yesterday. Last night, we had a, a vigil at the uh, funeral home and a, and a viewing. And <clears throat> she, was, uh, she was laying there, and I was looking at her, and I, I realized I reflected on her life and what, you know, who she was and what she did and what she accomplished and, um, and what she left behind. And I realized that it was, to me, it was kind of like the end of an era, um, kind of like a dynasty. I mean, mom was so overwhelming, I guess, is a word that we could uh, describe her with. And um, she was almost a dynasty in her own. It's like, you know, uh, it's hard to imagine life without uh, mom, Dr. Dolly Tadros. <clears throat> and I was sharing that with my, uh, my son, Jonathan, and he, he concurred, uh, and he said that he could, looking at her, he could hear her voice. And you, you can if you think about mom, because she talked a lot. Um, we all know that. She talked an awful lot, more than anybody I know. Uh, but that was a gift that she had, and it was what she liked to do. Uh, she talked on the phone, she talked in person, she told stories. Um, she loved to tell stories. I don't think anybody that knew her didn't hear her tell them a story more than once, the same story, um, in the same sitting. <clears throat> but I thought it would be appropriate if we could, uh, if you could join me right now uh, in just doing a little something um, to remember her. And that would be if we could uh, just close our eyes for a moment and try to remember her voice. And when she was talking to us and some of the things that she said and some of the situations that we were in with her and, you know, just some of the sayings that she said just for a moment. So, yes, her, her voice definitely was um, unique, and the things she said were unique. She was very honest, blunt at times. Um, she didn't hold back. She wore her emotions as a, a saying, I guess some of you may be familiar with, on her sleeve. She didn't hide her emotions. When she felt something, she let you know it. Um, and she didn't, uh, she, she was the kind of person that would get mad at people, but she would let them know it right away and um, have it out, and then she would let go of it. She didn't really retain much ill feelings towards anybody, at least if you knew her real well. She had a heart of gold. Um, she just lived life and saw it the way it is. It was black and white with her. It was either good or it wasn't. She believed in the good. She believed in always doing the right thing. She taught me always to do the right thing. Um, she worked at it. Um, I, I won't say she'd try to take, uh, she, she would take every path possible that, to get to where she wanted to go. Um, and she would plan those paths out. But um, she, she did it the right way. Anyway, um, she, I don't know if any of you read her obituary that I wrote. Um, I got a lot of uh, comments from people that didn't know her that uh, told me they didn't realize she had such an incredible life. And um, I just want to go over some of my memories of, of what my mother uh, and my father did as we grew up. Um, you know, when we were young, about I was nine, my sister was uh, 
11. They left Egypt. Um, they had a very good life there. My mother was a doctor. She, my father was an engineer who had his own company uh, that had been taken away from him by the government um, in, in a socialist state. And so they realized that there was no way that we were going to be able to make anything of our lives there uh, in such kind of in that kind of a uh, environment, political environment. And so they left what they had behind. We we had a very good life. I remember it very well. We lived in a, in a beautiful apartment on the sixth floor in a brand new part of town. They they had two cars. They they left it all behind, and uh, they left there with a few hundred dollars in their pocket. And they came here in 1968, and they started all over. Um, and backing up just a second, um, you know, my mother grew up in, in the 50s. And she was born in 31, so I guess in the 40s and the 50s. She went to school there, and she, was, she became a doctor, which if you think about what it's like in the Middle East right now uh, for women to advance, imagine becoming a doctor of, you know, of medicine in the 1950s, uh, what that took. And she not only did it, but she graduated the top of her class. And that wasn't enough. She went on and uh, she went to Germany and she did a fellowship and she got her PhD in forensics. Uh, and she went back to Egypt and she taught medicine and that's what she was doing when she left there. Uh, she was teaching medicine in, uh, in the university. And well, they were planning to leave in June of 1967. And at that time, a war broke out, the Six Day War. And they had the visas and everything ready to go. They had uh, permission to immigrate to the United States. Um, and the government told her she can't leave because she was a doctor and we were in a time of war. And at that time, the United States was an enemy uh, of Egypt. And so they said, you cannot go immigrate to the enemy country during a time of war. You're a doctor. We need you here. And so they revoked her visa to leave. And they told her, your husband and your kids, they can go. But you have to stay. And she, I don't know what she did. I was too young, I guess, to know. But I know she did what she needed to do. And it took her six months. And she got that stay lifted. And uh, we left I guess in January of 68. Anyway, I won't be here to keep you too long. I know it's going to be a still long day ahead. Um, we came here, we came to San Francisco, and I guess I, the, the point I want to make of this is that she planned everything out in her life, and then she executed it. She had an incredible amount of perseverance. You know, she planned to be a doctor. She planned to get her PhD. She did it. Uh, she planned to come to America, and when she came to America, she wasn't just going to come and land anywhere. Many people went to New York, many people went to LA. There's huge Egyptian populations there, as you all know, uh, because it was easy to find work. But no, mom took out the map and she studied every metropolitan area of the United States. And she decided that San Francisco was the best place. It had the best weather, uh, it had the best you know, climate, it was affordable at the time. And uh, she just decided to come here. And she wasn't going to go where the crowd went. She was going to do her own thing. So they came here, and, and uh, you know, the rest is history, I guess. You know, she became a doctor. And again, she had to start all over again and do all her exams and pass her, do her residencies. And she, she, uh, she eventually became a doctor in uh, obstetrics and gynecology. She wanted to deliver babies to, um, you know, to bring on life instead of deal with death, which is what forensics she was doing in, in Egypt. Anyway, um, I think everything in her life was pretty much planned and executed except maybe for one or two events. Um, and, I, and I'm going to stick to one, which was probably my sister passing away in 05. I think that was the hardest thing that she ever lived through when my sister suddenly passed away from cancer. Um, in the end, you know, she... I don't think she realized that this would all happen so fast. I, don't, I know that none of us did, and I know she didn't either. I, she d didn't really know it was going to happen, and she didn't really know it was happening when it happened. This all took place over a month, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details, but she, 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 had, uh, uh, she, she had five years ago, she had cancer, breast cancer, and 
uh, the doctors told her that she could do chemo and she can do radiation. And she chose to do only the radiation because one of the doctors told her that if you do the chemo, uh, it could attack your central nervous system and you could end up in a wheelchair. And he recommended, he was about a 70-year-old doctor, she told me from Stanford, and he told her, he says, if I was you, I wouldn't do it. Because if you don't, you'll probably live five good years. And you have all your faculties, you know, you're driving, you're walking, you're talking, you're fine. You're going to live at least five good years, probably. If you do the chemo, it could attack your central nervous system and you could be in a wheelchair in a matter of months. And you might live 10 years. And those aren't going to be 10 very good years. They're going to be 10 very poor years. And not only that, but you might not even live 10 years because at your age, you could die of many things before you even live 10 years. And she talked to me about this, and I think she talked to a lot of people about this because I've told the story to many people and they... Uh, They've all told me, yes, she did tell us that. And so she chose not to do the chemo. And, and as you all know her, the last time you all saw her a month ago, she was driving to church and walking right through that door with her cane and sitting right there. Um, it was almost five years and three months later that she suddenly lost her mind and the cancer had metastasized into her brain. Um, and she started to cause all kinds of problems with her. And she, um, she digressed very quickly. So even that, she planned out the five years. I know she didn't plan the very end, but she was an incredible, incredible woman. And she had a heart of gold. Uh, she was so loving. Um, if you really knew her, you know, sometimes she was very tough but she was very loving, and uh, I loved her very much, and I know she loved me very much. And I was very fortunate, actually, to get to tell her that. And those of you who don't tell your parents every day that you love them, uh, you should do that. And I'm going to tell you this from personal experience. When I took my mom to the hospital, it was, uh, it was a Tuesday morning, and I... I felt we could no longer take care of her at home, so I called. An ambulance and had them take her to, to the hospital, and they checked her in, and we spent the whole day there, um, and they were running tests. They were taking blood samples and doing x-rays and all kinds of stuff. And they ordered an MRI, and you know, but they wanted to do the MRI, and they couldn't really get her to keep her head still because they wanted an MRI on her head, so they sedated her. And they sedated her so heavily that night that the next morning, she woke up. She didn't wake up. She was out. She was out cold. And she was out cold from Tuesday until probably Friday night. We didn't really know if she was going to ever wake up again. And I sat and reflected that I never really, you know, because when we went in the hospital Tuesday, she was talking to me still, and, you know, we were conversing, and uh, I didn't think that was it. And all of a sudden, I was faced with the reality that I may never be able to see her, to speak to her again. And when she woke up on Friday night, the first thing I did when I, when I finally got her attention is I said, I said, Mom, it's Wahid. And she goes, she looked up and she said, oh, Wahid, hi, Habibi. And I said, I love you because I've been dying to tell her that before she passed. And she mouthed out, I love you too. And, you know, it was complete. We had a couple of good days after that, um, and then she went back into kind of like a coma, and, and uh, she never came back out. But, uh, I just tell you all, make sure you tell your, your loved ones that you love them every day, because you never know when it might be the last day. Thank you. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. It is with a heavy heart we accept the departure of the mother and faithful servant, Dr. Atidel Tedros. Through whom we learned many things she was truly, a school in endurance, an acceptor, exper, accept, expert in dealing with others. A role model in service. Dr. Atidel endured a lot in her life. 
she endured the departure of her beloved daughter, Lily Yusuf, followed by her husband, Mr. Azmi Tadros, and most importantly endured her illness with thankfulness, never ceased to thank God for his many blessings, especially the blessing of Tunas. She also had great experience in dealing with others due to her involvement in many fields. served many and was loved by those who know her. She is also a great example in the service of the church. We all noticed her love for God, his church and his service. Knowing Dr. Atidel for the past few years, I can personally attest to the fact that she had a close and special relationship with God through her prayers, personal readings, and diligent confessions. We all noticed how much she loved the house of God. She used to be the first attending liturgies, vespers, meetings, and conference, despite her illness and age. Let's also never forget her love of serving God. She was involved in many church activities and supported new ideas and service. She served at the board secretary for many years with amazing stamina. She contributed with her ideas, generosity, and service is many in many areas, whether in this church or several churches. She was truly an honorable example of the servant who serves with ideas, money, and time, deserving what the Lord Christ said to the faithful servant who invested his talent, saying, Well done. Good and faithful servant, you were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. On behalf of His Holiness Pope Tuadro II, clergy of North California and the West of the United States, and on behalf of the attending and present fathers, here today, especially Father Gavirgio Satalla, who came today uh, from Covina to share us with, to share us these uh, prayers. And uh, of course, Abuna Matthias Farid, Abuna Johanna Sad, Father Salib Gerges, Father Bisho Yirai. Father Athanasius Fikri, Father Gawargius Megalla, Father Bishoy William, and Father Bishoy Halim. And also Father Arsenius Nedi, but he went to Egypt uh, from weeks ago. The board and servants of our Church of St. Mary, St. John, we offer our sincere condolences to the blessed son Wahid Tadrus, member of the church board, Dr. Atidel's sisters, Mrs. Suat Tadrus, Mrs. Anam Gabur, and all grandchildren and to the entire church congregation asking our Lord to repose her soul in the paradise of joy. Dr. Atidel. Today you can say with St. Paul Apostle, 
I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on the day. Rest in peace and pray for us. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Dux abatri ke io ke agiob nev mati ke ninkai ke estos eon eston eon on amin ten oche volen goem mosje open choice isos bechrest es monem oem fiaro mare pek nain te ke herini oen softem bekla Vi et avash ve best of rose hechum chem ep satana sapasit in ne chalav sotium mono wah nainan kiriele son kiriele son kiria e flogi son emin es mo ero es mo ero estimetania coni e volgombi es mo mimbe christos benuci emin es esho Okay, give the grant to speak, confirm your peace and forgive our sins. Let's pray, thankful our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus our Lord. Fellowship and the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you. Live in peace. Peace you all. Amen. The family will accept condolences in the front of the church. After that, they will go to the burial site. We have uh, reserved two large buses. Anyone who would like to get on the bus instead of driving their own cars will be much more convenient. Uh, we'll fill the first bus and then the second. After that, after the burial, we'll have an agave meal here in the church. I uh, will appreciate to see all of you here. And then the family will be here also again tonight for condolences and tomorrow after Mass. Thank you very much. Ari Pame Vio Pechois Akshan Ichen Tekmet Oro Ari Pame Shen ichen tekmet oro ari pa mevi ofeth oem akshen ichen. Tekmet oro jeageos o theos ageos eshe. 